start our worship service of the first Sunday of Christian season. Let us pray. Precious God, we thank you for gathering us. As we gather this morning in your name, we come to you with hearts filled with so much love and grace. Now we start this worship, so we invite your Holy Spirit. Fill this place with your grace and love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please rise as you are laid before the call to worship. The voice calls out to us from the fire. You are standing on holy ground. The voice calls out to us from the mountain. You are a holy people. Lift up your voice in praise. Let everything that has breathed praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our first opening hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful in United Methodist Hymn 147. This is the first Sunday of creation season, uh, where we give thanks to the Lord for the many gifts of, of creation. Uh, and today we uh, give thanks, we celebrate the stars uh, and all the, the heavens and the creation of the earth itself, giving thanks to the Lord. Uh, so that's today. And so we have uh, pictures of stars. Uh, we are still trying to figure out how to make a new device work that allows us to have both screens. 
Uh, and during funerals, it will allow us to have a screen down closer uh, so people can see better. Uh, but you can see the, the, the screen is a little bit too small. So there, there's a way around it. We'll figure it out. Uh, so uh, this is an um, experiment and it will get us ready uh, for the funeral services that we've had. We had K service uh, this last week, uh, giving thanks to the Lord for all that K did for, for this church and way beyond that around the world. Um, children and I think, um, uh, what is it? it used to be Burma, what is it now? Yeah. Myanmar. Myanmar. Myanmar, I think that was where she was a missionary uh, for three years and then came back as a teacher here. Uh, and uh, so we gave thanks for her life. Um, uh, Leroy uh, Dickerson passed away this last week and Friday, uh, again, right after our bulletin was printed. Uh, so uh, that is uh, a service that we will be having in the, uh, in the near future, probably. Uh, so um, uh, this is uh, the, uh, the first Sunday of uh, September. Uh, Teresa will be preaching. So uh, it seems that I, it was quite by accident that she preached the first uh, Sunday of September, two, week, two years in a row. Uh, but she looked over and went, oh my goodness, and had to change and drop some of her stories because she was sure that you would remember them from a year ago, uh, even though she didn't. Um, uh, this, this is uh, Labor Day uh, week, and so the office will be closed on Monday. Uh, we do have men's Bible study uh, this coming Tuesday, um, and the preschool has their back-to-school activities, uh, and prayers and squares are meeting at Dugan's house. Uh, and it's the the morning uh, the morning uh, activities, um, and uh, then this coming Saturday, United Methodist Men is meeting, uh, and and David and Max aren't here to correct me, so uh, hopefully that is correct that the Methodist Men are meeting uh, on Saturday, and then after that we have the senior brunch, uh, and the senior brunch is at ten thirty to twelve. Uh, and um, Lisa, you want to when, when you do the children's message, you might give us a little bit more about that. Um, and then next Sunday is homecoming, uh, and so there'll be different. Uh, I think in the in the courtyard, in uh, Friendship Court, uh, there'll be different tables set up with the different activities and committees and things that we do here at the church. So that should be fun. Um, and um, I think, uh, oh, and then it says back to school jam, but that's, uh, that's not until next week. All right, other announcements that need to be made? Do we have uh, joys and concerns uh, to add to our concern for uh, Leroy Nickerson's family? Yes, here, good, thanks, Sam. Uh, I'd like to mention that in, in your um, yellow folder where you see the prayer list, on the right side are the, the prayers, the people that need our prayers in the congregation of Angola. So there it tells about Pilar Gonzalez's husband who has prostate cancer. I wanted to give you a little report of that. Her husband's name is Alex, and he is getting correct treatment and is doing well. But, and they thank us for prayers and ask us for continued prayers for him, for Alex. Thank you. Thank you, Brooke. Yes, here's one up here. Is it here? Yeah. I hope we can get through this without crying. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask for prayers for me because my dog died. And I loved her like crazy. She. It, it's right. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to pray for me, you to pray for me because my my dog died. 
Um, and she was fine. This was just a week and a half ago. She was fine until a few days before I had to put her down. And she got desperately ill very quickly. She couldn't walk, she couldn't stand up. It turned out she had pancreatic cancer, which I understand is really quick in, a, in all species, including humans and dogs. And um, I, 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 it was just too much for me. It's been really hard. She was bright and beautiful. She was, you know, all the things in that. She was wonderful. Those of you who met her will know. Her name was Mercy. Thank you. Yeah, I think she, she visited here in the church every now and then, so many of us, uh, many of us did uh, meet Mercy, who was a sweet, sweet dog. <clears throat> All right, Jim. Well, this is done. Yeah. Okay. This is a joy and a concern. Um, the joy part is, is that I did pass my CVEST test. Uh, <laughs> The concern is, is that I'm not hired yet, so I'm still going through all the processes to try to get on with the various school districts, and I can sure use some prayer. All right, yes, very good. We will pray that that come quickly. I'll behind you. Where is her friend Linda, who has blockage in her heart? She's going to have to have open heart surgery, and right now, until they find, they just found out, and it's a very, very serious, and unless they get her to the operating room soon, she may pass. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. Is Linda, is her name? Linda, okay, good, thank you. All right, others. I think uh, I think we're uh, ready for one last announcement. Uh, so, Hannah, I think you can come forward. Uh, believe it or not, um, We actually have the directories, and uh, yeah. so if you, if you want one, be sure I know so I can get some kind of count. Uh, we have picture directories, uh, and uh, we can uh, have you can pick up those uh, next week. Uh, you can either get the directory in the little binder, or you can get the the directory that has holes so that you can put it in a folder of your own choice. So uh, uh, let me know on the way out the door if you want to have the, the one in the binder or the one with the holes uh, so that you can put it in your own, uh, put it yourself. Uh, the way we've made this is that you can, uh, I can get a picture, so I just got some pictures, uh, and then uh, we can, you can just um, put it, uh, we'll, we'll pass out the, when we get a new picture, we'll put it in or a new name for the, um, for the part that has the names in the back. Uh, and uh, we'll just give you the new page and you can just switch them out and get the new page. And then that way as time goes on and we have more and more, uh, then we can just put them in. Uh, so uh, take a look at it again today. We'll put it on the table out in the, um, in the friendship court. And uh, take a look and make sure I did get the picture you want. Uh, I just got a new picture for, uh, for Jean. And so, and so next week you'll get uh, a sheet that has, uh, well, next week you would get it. Uh, now I'm able to change hers out today. But, uh, but, but there are some additional pictures, and so whenever that happens, I will have, uh, we'll have new sheets and you can just change them out. So uh, that way, uh, you know, in, in ages past, we paid to have, um, or, or they, they've done it for pictures that, that we had to buy. Uh, but then they didn't get it to us for a year, a year and a half, and by that time, new people had come and others had left um, some moving away and some going into the hands of God. Uh, and so this way we'll be able to change it whenever we want. So it will, uh, it will allow for that, which uh, will be good. So these will both be out on the table. Take a look at them. Let me know whether you want the, the holes for your own binder or whether you want a clear binder like this. And, um, and uh, so we have directories. Oh, and we'll also do uh, little directories like we've done in the past that just have names. So, uh, so that's, uh, we'll make enough of those for everyone. All right, so let me know what you like. All right.
right, let's, uh, let's take a moment, stand, and greet the people around you with words of peace. <laughs>
All right, will Lisa and the children please come forward? Lisa and the child? <laughs> The children come, I said, let the children come, then we'll be as one. Let the children come, let the children come, let them come so they can find the Good morning! Good morning. Okay, so hi, Cyrus. Cyrus got new shoes. They still flash. Yes. Priorities in his life, we need flashing shoes. But hey, we can always find them in the dark, right? All right, my friends, I want you to think about how we serve our church. What can we do? What can you guys do? Think about what you do. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. What else do you do? What do you do for the church? What did you do yesterday? <laughs> They cleaned the youth room last night. I, 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 Hannah says, oh, uh, yeah, it's messy up there. Because those windows, yeah, the window was left open at one point, so it's very dusty up there. I had to clean that when we had bigger youth group. Oh, the stuff we collect. <laughs> and the other thing. All right, what'd you do this morning, woman? Alkaline. That's how you serve the church, right? There's always something that we can do, right? One of the things that we do around here is help clean, right? We help um, with the kids, right? We sometimes, um, I'll torture you guys with crafts that I make you make for the congregation, right? And the dusty cards, you're not happy with me when I make that. Um, so yeah, there's all different things that we can serve, little or not. Things that we can do to help our church is always helping us maintain the building, right? And that we are present in our church, right? So I want you to think about that, how you can serve and how you can serve your community. So one of the things we've talked about is picking up trash and stuff. Sometimes it's little things like that that help a lot, right? Even Cyrus can help with picking up trash. Oh, yes. All right. Dear Lord, thank you for the servants that we have. Thank you for your love, your kindness, and your wisdom, and your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Sing with me if you would like. I sing for joy at the work of your hands, for after all you forever will stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Gracious God. We know that nothing we can possibly have can compare to the promise that we have in you, the promise of life and new life. We give you thanks for our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that he taught us how to love in everything he said and everything he did and finally giving his life for us. Lord, we give you thanks and we pray that we truly might, uh, might be instruments of your peace that we might be the work of your hands, uh, and that we might share your love. Lord, we lift up those of our church who stand in special need of your healing presence, your strength. Uh, we lift up uh, Leroy Dickerson's family and pray that you would surround them with peace on his passing. Uh, Lord, we lift up Symphony, uh, Cy Cynthia on the passing of, uh, uh, of, of mercy, and Lord, we pray that you would give her your comfort and your confidence and, and your strength. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, Linda's, uh, uh, Linda, Stephanie's friend. Uh, we pray that your healing would come to her heart, that uh, doctors would know what to do to, to keep all in order. And Lord, that 
that you would just keep her and protect her through this challenge. Uh, Lord, uh, we lift up Jim as he passed his CBEVS test and uh, now is open to employment. Lord, we, we thank you uh, for his perseverance, uh, that you guided him, that you held his hand through this process. Uh, and Lord, we trust that that will continue. But Lord, we, we lift up others that we hold in our hearts but might not have named. We lift them before you. And we pray for, for their healing and strength. And Lord, we lift up our world. Uh, we lift up those places where uh, oppression is happening, where there's warfare, uh, where there is pain and suffering. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would surround these areas, uh, these people, uh, with your strength and that you would bring healing to our world. Lord, we give you thanks for all of uh, the beauty of, of this creation. Uh, as we remember the different parts, Lord, we, uh, we give you thanks for the whole that, that you have uh, created a world where uh, all things work together. And we pray, Lord, that we might be a part of that working, that you would direct us that we truly uh, might, be, uh, might be sharing uh, in, in this continuing creation. Lord, we ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our worship as we dedicate our tithes and offerings to God. <laughs> rise for our pathology and the labels. Gracious and loving God, 
We thank you for everything we have. Eternal One, you appear to Moses in the flame of the burning bush and revealed the sacred name, I am who I am. We stand in awe of your eternal presence and power. As Moses removed his sandals recognizing holy ground, we to offer this gift acknowledging that everything is from you. May our offerings, like the bush that burned but was not consumed, be a testament to your enduring love and grace. Use these gifts for your glory and purpose, and may we be continually reminded of your call on our lives to serve and proclaim your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Our cathedral choir leads us into the morning song, Arise, Shine.
So uh, a couple of announcements uh, that I missed. Uh, one is that the flowers on the altar were uh, given by Teresa for me. Uh, she, um, uh, she realized that we didn't have anybody dedicating it, and my birthday is on the 15th. Uh, and that date was already taken, so I didn't think anything, and then lo and behold, uh, she showed up with flowers for me. So that's, uh, uh, that's good. Um, our uh, reading for today comes from the book of Exodus. It's a continuation of the story of Moses. We had uh, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph. Uh, and then there's uh, is it a 400 year uh, uh, space in time before uh, God comes to Moses. Uh, we saw the saving of Moses uh, from the Nile last week, and now uh, the burning bush. Uh, Exodus 3, 1 through 15. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and lo, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Then he said, Do not come near. Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to do a good, to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be a sign for you, that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Then Moses said to God, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the people of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. May the, may the Lord add blessing upon the hearing and the reading of this God's word. Good morning. Good morning. One of our new uh, favorite comedians is named Nate Bargatze, and he's very funny. Um, he's from Tennessee, and he has a very slow uh, uh, speech. Not slow speech. What do you call that? Slow. Oh, girl. Well, I thought I would that's, remember, that's but it's kind of a draw. 
But he was talking about uh, his relationship with his wife, and he says, my wife always says, you never listen. You never listen. You never listen. That's all I hear. She says, you never listen. I hear that. I tell her. I hear when you tell me I never listen. It's the other stuff that I don't hear. (laughs) Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come to be together. We thank you especially for this chance we have to serve and to be loved to one another. Please bless this time that we have. Amen. Today's sermon title, Listening with Awe, is inspired by our scripture. That God is speaking to Moses in the form of a burning bush. It's about listening. Really listening. Like Moses, we have to listen. Listening is a true form of paying attention. When we pay attention, we take in all the information. We all have experiences of not really paying attention, of not really listening, and we almost always regret those times. Listening is considered a spiritual practice by many. Some say that our prayer time should be one part talking and two parts listening, or maybe even ten parts listening, depending on the situation. The lock screen on my phone is a picture of a ceramic art piece with the words of St. Benedict. Listen with the ear of your heart. (coughs) This is the kind of paying attention that I aspire to. Listening not just with my ears, but with my heart. I have to really listen when my grandson Scott speaks. I try my hardest, and sometimes I just can't understand what he's saying. And then sometimes, when I'm looking at a video I took of him talking about this or that, I finally figure out what he was saying. It makes me wish I could go back and continue our conversation with my full comprehension in place. It's a different story when I want Scott to listen to me. I have to say, eyes and ears, so I can see that he isn't paying paying attention to something else. Sometimes I have to lift his chin with my hand and say, look at me, I want you to listen. At two and a half, he's not a big fan of paying attention to instructions, especially when they're counter to what he really wants to do. I suppose a burning bush is God's way of lifting Moses' chin so that he would listen. A burning bush leaves you in awe, so you can't help but listen. There is now, believe it or not, a science of awe. Awe is an emotion which, until just recently, was kind of ignored. It was relegated to being too ethereal, you know, like lacking substance. You couldn't really describe it. Um, And so nobody really studied it in any real way. But we all know awe. Awe is that feeling you have, like standing at the edge of the Grand Canyon. It's a strange combination of fear and wonder. And there's also respect and reverence mixed in. Moses was listening with awe. God was telling Moses that he was the one to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses was already not too sure about this commission. He knew Pharaoh, and he had a pretty good grasp of who he was as a person. And he certainly was not someone to confront Pharaoh about anything, least of which would be the state of the slave economy in that kingdom. Unbeknownst to Moses, the awe he was feeling was exactly the exact emotional state necessary to get the job done. In the scientific study of awe, we have discovered that awe transforms our brains and our bodies. Awe in our everyday life leads us to be our best selves. We need awe. Awe sharpens our reasoning and points us toward big ideas and new insight. Awe cools our immune inflammation response and strengthens our bodies. It is awe that spurs us towards sharing and creating strong networks. It causes us to take actions that are good for the natural and social world around us. Awe transforms who we are. It inspires the creation of art and music. Awe is the basis of our faith and religion. It turns out that awe is a vital force in our lives. So here's a little catechism for this morning. 
Every liturgical season in the calendar has its focus on a particular aspect of our faith and tradition. In Advent, we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus. In Epiphany, which is after Christmas, we celebrate the baptism and life of Jesus. In Lent, we remember the teachings and sufferings of Jesus in preparation for Easter. In Easter, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ. And in Pentecost, we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. Each liturgical season helps us to cultivate awe. We stand in awe of the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We stand in awe of the work of the Holy Spirit. And we stand in awe of the creative force that is God. And we are now in creation season. We are celebrating the wondrous creative power of God, but also reminding ourselves to stop and smell the roses, to appreciate the trees, to wonder at the moon, to marvel at babies and our pets and wild animals and even bugs and even weird biological processes that we sometimes don't know very much about. We are celebrating all of it. On this first Sunday in creation season, we celebrate the sun, moon, and stars. These celestial bodies have generated much awe over the millennia. Before modern science, the awe of this part of creation was expressed mostly in poetry and song. Then there was philosophy, and then there was science. And we are still just scratching the surface. The more we learn, the more we find that there is even more that we don't know. And the more awe we have. Just yesterday morning, Ben was reading an article about how the Earth has not always had the same orbital path around the sun. Our reactions to this information were very different. Ben was thinking about, sort of, you know, with disgust, about how he was only ever taught one way about our solar system in school. And I didn't have the heart to tell him that science has made a couple of advances since then. I, on the other hand, said, how could they even possibly know that? Like, I wanted proof or something, as if seeing the math would help me understand. It would not, I just have to tell you. Not knowing a lot about things as mind-bending as dark matter or black holes might be troubling for some. Even believing those things exist is problematic for some people. But this is exactly the point at which science and faith intersect. Here's what I mean. I never met Jesus, but I take the testimony of those who did meet him as chronicled in the Christian scriptures. I also take the testimony of those others who have encountered Christ in a real and spiritual way. Their testimony informs my understanding even when I have some doubt. In the same way, I am not an astrophysicist or an astronomer, but I take the testimony of those who are. I trust that they know what they are talking about, even when I am a little bit incredulous. Now, there have been arguments down through the ages that science is trying to prove that there is no God. Many famous scientists are notorious atheists, but not all scientists are atheists. One of those infamous atheists was astronomer Carl Sagan, who coined the phrase, we are made of star stuff. What does that mean? Well, it means that the stuff that makes up our sun, our planet, and even us, was made within exploding stars millions and millions of years ago. There is a division of NASA called astrobiology, where people study all these seemingly crazy things. If you want to look it up, it's at astrobiology.nasa.gov. From where I sit, the more we know about the universe, the more we should believe in God. In some ways, us being made of star stuff is like the best superhero origin story ever. The million, billion, trillion things that had to happen just right in order for me to be standing here with the capacity to reflect and wonder at them all is just as good as a crash landing in the middle of a cornfield on planet Earth because your dad sent you away from the exploding planet of kryptonite. And for those of you who don't know superhero origin stories, that's Superman's origin story. Our origin story can be found in Genesis 1, but it can also be found in John 1, 
which reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being that has come into being. This is how John metaphorically describes two parts of the Trinity, the Word being Jesus Christ, and then, of course, God. The creative force of that Word brought everything into being. John describes it as a Word, and a Word is spoken. Are we listening? Are we paying attention? Are we in awe of what is being spoken to us? You know, Ben comes from a very long line of Methodist clergymen. He's actually the seventh generation. Ben's father's parents, Bruce and Alma Ellis, were an active clergy couple, with Bruce being appointed to several churches in our conference, including Riverside Arlington Methodist Church. Bruce died several years before Ben and I were married, but Al Alma lived until August 1999. I really admired Alma. She took an active role in the ministry of the church and often preached for Bruce because he would sometimes become incapacitated by terrible back problems. She was active in United Methodist Women, and in her later years, she was the membership and attendance secretary at Los Osos UMC. And she had a really quick wit. Bruce and Alma were both cremated, and the whole extended family tra traveled up to Round Meadow in the High Sierras to spread their ashes. Yes, we know this isn't legal, but that isn't the point of this story. Anyway, the sun was setting and it was getting dark by the time we opened the boxes of ashes. Each person took a handful from each box and spread out around the, the place to drop the ashes. Ben and I walked over to the base of a large tree and Ben said a prayer. In the gathering darkness, I let the ashes slowly drop from my hands and I felt something strange. It was the small identification coin that identified Alvin's ashes, and it was in my hand. As I held the coin, a powerful feeling came over me, like Alma was passing her mantle to me, like she wanted me to follow her example. I started to cry. I imagined all the blessings and hardships she and Bruce lived through. I imagined all the ways in which their work in the church touched so many lives. But most of all, I felt like there was no way I could ever measure up to Alma. Through my tears, I explained what I was thinking to Ben. He comforted me. But the moment was interrupted by needing to disperse the rest of the ashes and get back to our lodge. It wasn't until some time later that I realized this was my burning bush experience. God was expecting more of me, and God used Alma's memory as a means to communicate that to me. God put his hand under my chin and made sure I was listening. I was in awe, and still am, of the way that God used that situation and the grief of my whole family to bless and affirm me in my ministry. It was a very powerful experience and I am forever changed by it. But this story might seem a little too grand. It's like lightning striking, kind of like being surprised by awe. We can, though, and should cultivate awe in our everyday lives. Just the other day, I took Scotty over to swim in Kim and Steve's pool. Kim and I were walking around the shallow end watching Scott play in the water. And Kim noticed that a beautiful red dragonfly was circling just above our heads. She pointed it out to me. I said, maybe it's hoping for a drink of water. Kim said that it wasn't trying to land anywhere. And of course, I had to assure Scott that dragonflies don't bite. When I started to really pay attention, the dragonfly flew down very close to my face so I was able to get a nice, long look. It was amazing. We all paused for a moment to watch it continue its circle around the pool, while Scott said dragonfly over and over. I dare say we were in awe. God is the creative force of all that is. 
God is the great I am. Of course, we don't, often don't, have words to encapsulate that essence, but we don't need words. We have awe. Moses was called by God. God put his hand under Moses' chin and said, Moses, are you listening to me? I'm sure Moses gulped and was more than a little bit terrified. The text says that he turned away, but I think he could still feel God's hand under his chin. Moses, are you listening to me? Like really listening? Our closing hymn today is one of my very favorites, entitled The Summons. The last verse reads, Lord, your, summon, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. God has called your name. God has called my name. I can tell you that there, there have been times when I could feel God's hand under my chin making sure I was listening, like that time at Round Meadow and that day in the pool with Kim, and probably a million other times. Sometimes it's just like me trying to tell Scotty something that he doesn't want to hear. I often don't want to hear what God has to say. Other times it's like the most familiar and comforting voice, like Vin Scully calling a Dodger game. What does it feel like when God's speaking to you? Are you listening? We are celebrating Holy Communion today. We are told to do this in remembrance of Jesus Christ. We should pause for just a moment to consider the miracle that turns bread and juice into humans. There's some complex biology there. We should also pause for at least a couple more moments to consider how the sharing of this tiny, simple meal unites us as one people. This is one of those times when God is putting his hand under our chins and asking us to pay attention. Psalm 19.1 reads, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. <clears throat> My prayer for this creation season, and all the seasons really, is that we will stop and listen, really listen with the ears of our heart, pay attention, and listen with awe. Amen. As we share in Holy Communion today, we'll uh, be standing in front. Please come forward, take some of the bread, and dip it in the cup. Uh, and then you can go ahead and eat it right away, or you can uh, stay and, and kneel at the uh, kneeling rail if you would like. In the United Methodist Church, all are invited to share in Holy Union, nothing should stand in the way of any kind of status in life or age or, or anything because this is the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he invited all people to come to himself. Let us share in the great thanksgiving as we sing the invitation as printed in your Lord's Supper. The Lord
and a good and joyful day. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. We offer our entire being to you, O God of creation, who made the sun and the moon to bring light by day and by night, and hung the stars in the sky, who hollowed out the valleys and rise up the mountains who formed the seven seas and populated the world with glorious creatures. Blessed be your name, O Lord. You created us and fashioned us from dust and breathed into us the breath of life. Amen. And so, gracious God, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hand. Sing. Oh. He sided with the oppressed, had compassion for those who suffer, and gave dignity, who, dignity to women and children. He taught us in word and deed that all people and even all living things are to be treated with honor and dignity for we are your children. By the baptism of his suffering, Death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church to give witness to your love. He promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he shared the Passover meal with his disciples, celebrating your freedom and salvation. He took bread from the table, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. When the meal was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. That night, he was taken, made to stand before an unjust trial, nailed to a cross, and sealed in a tomb not his own. But in three days you raised him from the dead. And so, in remembrance of this your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of praise. Christ Gracious God. 
God, who loved your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here and on this gift of bread and the cup. Make them before us the life of Christ, who loved your Spirit upon us, as we offer ourselves to be in your presence in the world, redeemed by his love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other giving testimony to you with our lives until Christ returns in glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever.
We don't know God. We give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of this holy, your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we are closing with uh, our last hymn called The Summons. You'll find it in the Faith We Say, uh, number 2130. Uh, and it, it's a long song, but it moves pretty fast. Uh, and it is uh, one of Teresa's favorites. Uh, if you need to run, please feel free. Uh, maybe a football game starting, or you just can't resist the cookies any longer. Uh, but, uh, but we'll close with this hymn, yeah, the summons, number 2130. Let's stand as we say. It's now creation season uh, on eagle's wings. It's quick, so don't, don't, don't block us on the way out the door. Uh, and uh, be sure you let me know if you would like a directory, if you would like to have uh, uh, one that has uh, holes in it or one that's in a binder. Uh, and then we'll make enough uh, ones that have no pictures for everyone. Uh, so that's not an issue. Uh, so, uh, receive this benediction. May you go as you are called, for God has called your name. The summons rings true. God is calling you to share that good news. In the name of our Savior, Amen. On Eagle's Wings, number 143, if you want the music.